Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Uplifting Studios TV. Today, I am so, so excited because I am joined by my family. This is a very special family reunion uh, episode and it's a reflection of what 2020 has been. So please allow me to welcome the people who are so, so special to me. I've got my big bro here, Pastor George Mathu. He is the senior pastor and the founding pastor, may I say, of Eagles Faith Christian Center in Nairobi. And I've got my beautiful little sister here, Kambua Mathu. Thank you for joining us. She is a gospel artist. She's the TV host of Raoka. She is a wifey to my brother Jackson Mathu, and she is a wife and a mother. Mother of one, <laughs> Nathaniel, and expecting another baby on the way. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, sis. Thank you. So good to be here. I it, it appears I did not get the memo because y'all are dressed in red and you look yes, so this season, but you look gorgeous, sis. You look <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Is it like a Jamuhuri day kind of thing? Like Christmas. Like oh, Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Well said, well said, well said. <laughs> Christmas theme. You're you're channeling that. So for the benefit of those who do not know us and how we're related, I, I wanted to do a little bit of a brief intro. So George is my older brother. Uh, we've got an older sister, Cheeks, who's a firstborn. And then we've got George. And then we've got Jackson, who Kambua is married to. And then we've got me. So a lot of people, particularly the Kenyans, will always jump into my DMs on Instagram and go like, so how is she your little sister? And all the Kenyans ask this question, like how, like exactly how? <laughs> so this is exactly how she's my little sister, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, how did we meet? I thought it would be good to talk about how we first met. And so how did you meet George? Or George, do you remember meeting Kambush for the first time? Oh, my God. It's like everybody's always known Kambush. She's a celebrity. <laughs> Everybody talks about. So, I mean, at least we got one. We got one celebrity in our family. So, um, uh, I don't know, Kambu, I remember, I'll never forget the day, the, the day we had coffee together and, uh, yeah. and um, you know, I'd, I'd heard so much about you and, uh, and we got to meeting and I think it was just around about the time you were meeting my brother Jackson and I don't know why I met you. Were you coming to do some things for us in church? Why did we meet? Um, what, so what Oh, I've also been trying to remember how I, because I've known George for a really long time. Um, I think because I knew you from just being a, a pastor. And uh, so then you asked if we could have uh, some coffee and just you get, uh, talk and yeah. catch up. Whatever. So we did. And it was very refreshing to do that. Um, but I can't. I feel like I can't remember the very first time that I knew. Me too. Me too. Well, I, I, I just, I've just known you for a really long time. Did you ever visit our church? You did you visit our church I, before? I, did. I, did. I visited. Um, I visited when Eagles was at Grand Regency. Wow. Oh my god! That, that is a long time. Wow. Yes. You did. Were you? I mean, what did you look like? I, I was <laughs> very chubby. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, Grand Regency. That's that, that's that's like a, a long time ago. Wow, it, wow. I didn't know that. Long, really. It's a long time ago. I I was. Uh, it must be like twenty. Uh, no, two thousand and maybe two thousand four, two thousand five. Three, four. Yeah. yeah three. Wow. Oh my gosh. I think that is, that's a long time ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, Kambur, I met you, haha, on my wedding day, um, almost 11 years ago to the day. 
And uh, it's so interesting how this happened because Jackson had been campaigning for this certain person to sing at the wedding. You know, he kept saying, oh, I have a friend, I have a friend. Like, you know, as a bride come boy, you know, you don't just let strangers sing at your wedding, right? Yes. Uh, so Jackson kept pushing the card of, you know, my friend should sing at the wedding. And then from time to time when we were riding in the car, he would slip me the, you know, your CD and he'd go like, what do you think? Um, she's beautiful, right? And I'm like, do you see, so we're talking about singing here. So yeah, she's beautiful, but, and, and he just kept pushing it. And I was, I was quite resistant, I must say, because I did not know who it was. And so he kept playing the songs for me so that I could, you know, warm up. And then I remember a few days leading up to the wedding, everybody was home and we were all, you know, everyone was watching YouTube. Your, he put your songs on YouTube. And I remember I was writing my wedding vows upstairs and I came down and everyone was like, you know, Nash was there, Sheiks was there. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, she should sing at the wedding. She looks just like you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, like, he had gotten everyone on board and that was that you were put in the program and I didn't, I didn't even have a say and so I haven't still met you and I actually got to see you on the wedding as you sang the song <laughs> yeah yeah wow that's I, I didn't know that also. I didn't know that. Yeah. So when yeah. she got up to sing Nishikilie, that's <laughs> when I got introduced to Kambua. So, wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, all right. Mm. Let's get into this because, as we know, 2020 has been a year like no other. It has been unprecedented. Uh, and, and a lot of in many ways, uh, a lot of families haven't gotten to spend as much of the time that they would have liked together. Those who are away, like myself, um, living uh, overseas. And so, you know, this time of Christmas, end of year has always been a time to come together. It's a festive time. It's, it's a very family oriented time. And I felt that it was necessary for us to come together and just have this conversation of what impact, you know, COVID-19 has had on us, you know, as a family, and um, individually as well, and uh, just unpack that a little bit. But also, as we head into the new year tomorrow, um, you know, that we're speaking some good things into 2021. So, George, I will start with you and just talk about what impact has COVID had on um, Eagles Faith Christian Center? Because I know you guys have really shown up in a big way on social media, particularly on Facebook. You know, you've been doing lives for a long, long time. You've always had your um, service on live for, for, for quite some time and almost like preparing you guys for this wave that was to happen in 2020 and mm -hmm. really embracing it fully, I see, um, going on there multiple times a week and your following has really grown on Facebook. So tell me, what impact has that been for you, George? I think uh, straight from the, you know, from the onset of this pandemic, which is, by the way, which is real because a lot of people, uh, maybe, maybe even personally, me initially, I kind of downplayed it, and um, you know, uh, you know, saying uh, maybe we can talk about the pandemic a little, uh, a little later. But uh, but uh, right from the get go, we, you know, we were for the idea that our church needed visibility and we needed to be out there, and we were not going to like um, stay hidden. And and there was this uh, aspect of once churches are restricted, when, once you have that restriction of movement, it is so easy to become irrelevant. You know, suddenly people who are coming to your church, are, you think about that. People who are coming to your church are no longer coming to church. Absolutely. How do you react to them? So we mm -hmm. took it as a challenge. I had no idea media could be this powerful, this impactful, 
and 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 and, and uh, traditional media, quote unquote, TV. And I remember my sister Kambua always told me, "Man, you, you know what? You you got to get into that space and kind of begin to own that space and become comfortable with social media." I mean, I don't have a million followers on Instagram. I mean, I'm not I'm not a celebrity. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but in my, own limited, my own limited fashion, in my me being myself and, and and loving the people and wanting to reach out to our people who couldn't come to church and yeah. who initially, you know, you're surprised. Well, well, why can't people really come? And and I think even initially we thought maybe this is like a one month thing, it will, maybe a month, maybe two months, maybe three months max, and the churches yeah. will be back. We are going almost a year and churches are not really back. So how, how else do you reach out to your people? You've got to own the space. Uh, we, we, we've had to buy equipment. We've had to uh, make media a, a major priority in our church. We've had to like really change the way we think. And, uh, and, and even, even the structure of our service services, we can't go too long. We can't be, um, because you're accommodating so many, so many kinds of people. We've got a huge following in America uh, yeah. and, and Europe, you know. So this is amazing being able to do this at this time. And, and and feel comfortable and feel okay about it. And feel comfortable. Yeah, I, I really feel like you were being led to, to that point, you know, George. And let's talk a little bit about Miracle Valley. I really, really want to talk about that because you relocated. And I guess when the church began, you know, Grand Regency, as as Kambua was talking about earlier when she visited uh, in the early days, were you there for our first service, the Grand Regency? Were you there? No, you I there? was. I was in Were Australia. You? Me? Wow. Really? Yeah. No, in no, no, no. fact, you, you launched the church when I was in Australia. I remember receiving an email from Mum and Dad, and they're like, "George has started a church," and I was like, "Wow! Did he wait for me to leave home so that he could start a church?" Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that happened whilst I was here. Sure, I remember that. I, I, and and uh, uh, so, so you're talking about transitioning, you know, to the Miracle Valley. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about um, Miracle Valley. So, moving from Grand Regency to where was it before Kaka House? It was in Westland still. Yeah, we were in Jacaranda, you know. Uh, Jacaranda. Uh, Jacaranda and Hotel. Kaka House. And then, um, and then now here, uh, Kiambu Road, uh, Miracle Valley. Let's just talk a little bit about that transition and what it is that you're doing, uh, building at Miracle Valley. Because when I was last home a couple of years ago, we saw the land. You took my husband and I there and we saw it. And yeah. so exciting. What has now grown out of that? Yeah, yeah. Ownership. Ownership, you got to get into ownership at some point. Well, well, let me also say this, if you're called into it, and, and I do believe that uh, when God assigns you into something, you know, the best thing is to be a good steward. I think for a long time we were paying so much rent, you know, uh, you know, in Westlands. And, and I resisted the move to, uh, from Westlands to, uh, um, to Kiambu Road because I, I felt like in Westlands we were this city church. We we're on the seventh floor. We had uh, a bit of visibility and, you know, people were coming to see us. We had done uh, a beautiful, beautiful sanctuary. You remember we, we built, I went to China. I got all this stuff, you know, I bought, and so I built it for, for, for very little money. You know, I've got a bit of a background in design and, and I loved it. I didn't want to leave Westlands. And so, but the season, and, and, and you know, you, you know, you've got to learn how to move and shift with seasons, mm -hmm. learning, learning, mm -hmm. learning when are you supposed to do, and you've got that feeling on the inside that, my God, we, you know, we got to move into some kind of ownership. And when we did, and it was our people who really pushed me into it, when we did, my God, it, it just changed the whole dynamic of the church because now everything is done for permanence. Now, when you do it, you're doing it excellent, but you're doing it for a long time because, you know, you guys are going to be there for long. And so transitioning and ownership and, and just and just getting, becoming okay with things that are incomplete 
because you know you don't build Rome was not built in a day. You don't build a church in a day. You don't build you don't build that kind of a facility, which is a two acre facility. You don't like uh, you don't develop it in a day. So you've got to believe God for money. Doing it debt free, by the way, debt free. Mm -hmm. That's another aspect uh, that uh, that I thought you know. And now we paid like almost thirty million for that property. We bought it for eighty five million. Bought you know, paid paid thirty million for it without borrowing money that is that's big man that's big for yeah. a church that's too big we are not a big church you know that um yeah. God's that, that's absolutely God. incredible how the provision has come in and just seeing yeah. that that little seed of faith that's been planted and uh, what's what's happened now in, in such a big way. And uh, Kambua, I'll come to you now, sis. And mm -hmm. what kind of year has it been for you? Because, my Lord, first year being a mummy, <laughs> embracing that and juggling the whole work uh, aspect and uh, and now um, expecting baby number two. Yeah. What kind of year has it been? Being pregnant during a COVID time has that been any? I guess yeah. Just talk us through what kind of a year it's been for you. Um, wow, it's been a very interesting year. Definitely not the kind of year that I um, imagined when the year started. Um, I have um, I have a little one. You just had Nathaniel. Um, oh. He he. You know, being first of all, being a first time mom was a whole new dynamic that I I just I I've been unpacking slowly and learning on the job and just. Um, enjoying everything that comes with it and rolling with the punches and reaching out for help when I need to because and you know and I really thank you sis because I'm able to like sometimes just ask even questions that probably should be very obvious as far as motherhood is concerned but you know yeah. I, I I believe if you don't know you just you don't know <laughs> and you will know by asking so having intentionally building a mom village around me to just help mm. me motherhood and um and then now you know the year started and covid happened and my first thought was how do i keep my son safe how do i keep my family safe how do i take care of myself so that i am protecting my family and and then you know i'm expecting another baby and it, it i think in initially my my initial feeling was um, there might have been a level of, of anxiety that came with it for me. And I had to now think through it, one, as a believer, and know that I cannot live in fear. I will do mm -hmm. everything that I'm expected to do um, as far as I can, but I cannot live in fear. I cannot allow the situation to paralyze me from doing the things that I that I love, that I'm called to do, um, making adjustments at work. I work at a media station, and it's very, it, you know, it's, it's a very busy place, and we do a lot of things and interact with a lot of people so we had to make so many adjustments um seeing people at work laid off because of covid it's been a tough mm. year in that sense but it's also been a year with some very um uh, special moments that probably would not have happened if covid hadn't happened i feel like covid allowed even me to just slow down um, think through everything I'm doing and being very intentional with how I use my time with um, who I'm connecting with um, you know and finding other ways like he, as as George has um, has done with the social media just finding ways to get my my music and my message out there without necessarily doing it in the conventional way where we had to have meetings and you know and that kind of thing <laughs> and just I, realizing <laughs> yeah i i love that you said that kambua because you've been really innovative and i love what you did with your night of worship and wow i think it was such a necessary event given 
where mm -hmm. things were at, where things are at with COVID and the impact it's had on Kenya, because I know with different countries, they, there's been, the impact has been different. You know, for me here in Australia, um, you know, we have felt it, but certainly um, other areas more than, than others. For example, Melbourne was in a lockdown situation for an extended period of time. They were in a stage four uh, lockdown where you cannot go beyond uh, five kilometers of your home and everything is really uh, monitored and uh, yeah it was just really really uh, strenuous um, situations and other parts like where I used to live before for 20 years in Western Australia they haven't felt it they had a, a brief lockdown when it first came in in, in March and um, were able to lock down their borders, shut it down real hard and contain the situation. And now they are, you know, interacting quite freely and uh, no social distancing, having events and everything. Whereas for us in New South Wales, you know, it's also been different. You know, we've also been impacted in, in different ways. But when I think about home and I've seen how particularly the education system has been so affected, you know, um, kids can't go to school until possibly, you know, the next year. So those who were candidates for major exams, you know, just think about it. Think about it when you were in class eight or, you know, when you were in fourth form and you wanted to graduate and move on. I can only imagine what, what that has meant for them. So enter the night of worship, Kambua. Wow. Where did this... Um, idea come from and how was it received um so i had been trying to think of just how i can because we we could not we can't hold events anymore we don't have gigs anymore and um we really had to think through okay what can i do as an as an artist as a as a minister to still reach the people where they are uh, so i sat down with a friend of mine called dana said he's a you know he's a musician a producer and he said we can i have a studio and we can do something so um i have to say at first i was really nervous because i'm like okay so we'll do it who will watch it how do you know because yeah. it's not something i had done um but i thought the only way to do this is just get your feet wet just to do it mm. and so um, we got together and I got a couple, some of my friends to come and do background vocals and, um, and instrumentalists jumped on. And it was really, for me, it was very refreshing to be able to uh, be on a live stage again in that sense. Um, yeah. but more just, I think the, 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 the effect that the night of worship had on people who've interacted with it, and it's still up on YouTube, but at least yeah. most of it, is um, that they, they needed, it, it's something that was needed at that time, a message of hope, a message of reminding people that even in the pandemic, God is still who he says he is, yeah. and mm -hmm. that um, the, the things and circumstances around us don't change that. Mm -hmm. And also, just, um, you know, knowing that it's, we're in a season, and seasons don't last forever, they, they, they pass, no, they, they give seasons. So, yeah. a night of has been you know just a time of refreshing and to to remind people where our focus should be because it's so easy to elevate every other voice over the voice of god mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know just be like oh my, we are doomed this covid look at all the people losing their lives and, and yeah. just completely missing out on what god is saying to us so that's basically what a night worship was for Wow, it was it was an incredibly powerful night. Um, it's yeah. something that uh, we we keep watching, and the children have watched, and they've sang along. And I remember you hadn't uh, announced yet that you were expecting baby number two, so I can imagine standing for that whole hour and really giving your all um, yeah. because it's 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 labor, singing, standing. <laughs> and and doing it in that way is is quite a bit of of labor. And I want us now to talk about Nema. My goodness, Kambua. What a this song, song. What a song. has been absolutely incredible. Um, it's a song that's brought a lot of healing, I, I do believe, 
um, in the nation and the people who have had this song, there is something particularly different. There's something particularly different. And I have a few questions to ask you about that, Kambua. But before I do, uh, for those who haven't had the song Nema, which means the grace of God, I will pop that on for you and we'll be right back. I mean, even for my friends who do not know Swahili, there's something about it. They listen to it and they're like, oh, my goodness, Annie, your sister is incredible. Now, I just have, I don't even know where to start with the questions. Um, and this has been a pretty <clears throat> special year for us, Kambua. You and I have just spent a lot of time talking and encouraging each other and lifting each other. So for me, when this song dropped, like I, I felt it from a different light. I felt it in my heart. I felt it in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And so talk us through the making. Where did this whole idea come from? <laughs> so um, I knew that I wanted to sing about the grace of God uh, over my life and just looking back and, and seeing the journey that I've been on, even my journey to being a mom, um, it has really just taken the grace of God, um, having waited for a really long time to have a child. And, um, but then also many, many other things that are so personal to me, losing my, my father and going through that and coming out on the other end, you know, I thought I'd completely fall apart after that loss. And just so many things that God has carried me through. And um, so, and then I met this uh, pastor, he's originally from the Congo. And he, he, he said, you know, we can, we can put words to what it is you want to express. So mm -hmm. he wrote this song. Um, his name is Pastor Daniel Mangubu. So he wrote this song and, I, when I when he played it for me that first time, I said, "This is exactly what I want mm -hmm. to say, and it's exactly how I want to say it." Um, so you know, went into studio and recorded the song, and um, I have to be honest, I was literally like holding back tears when I was singing this mm -hmm. song because I feel I I I I know that it's only grace that has kept me this far and nothing else. I cannot brag about any. It's not my brand or my influence or whatever. It's re, it's really purely the grace of God. So um, yeah, and then from there we got a chance to to shoot the video, and I'm really glad that generally I've had a team that um, has also understood the season that I'm in, and they were very patient and very made it very easy for me. And um, you, what I find interesting about sharing our stories or our testimonies is that sometimes you think it's just my story, it's just my testimony. But um, when you put it out there, there's a way that God just uses it to resonate with other people for different reasons. You know, it's not everybody who 
has been on the waiting journey for a child, but just people getting reminded that if it wasn't for the grace of God, really, where would we be? So um, mm-hmm. it's, my, it's my story. It's my heart and it's my journey. I absolutely felt that. I felt that. I remember calling George and saying, have you listened to Naima and sending it to him and sending it to as many people as I could. I want to read you some comments, which I know you've all probably already read on your um, YouTube channel. And this is from Margaret Margarita. And she says, my testimony I stayed for three years, but the kind of agony I went through, the depression, um, you always feel like it's written on your face, Yani, how fai kitu, you know. Um, And she just goes on just to say that uh, this has really, really transformed her. And then I have somebody else here um, who has gone to say, uh, I'm listening to this song crying. I'm waiting for the fruit of the womb for more than uh, seven years and hope that one day I will testify of the great work of God. I shall wow. never give up on waiting. And it is endless. Like it just goes on and on and on. And I also saw how, you know, on, 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 on your Instagram, how that blew up as well in terms of the, the comments and how people felt seen and heard through this song. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that's what it is, is that um, for me, I, I, I sing of a God who sees me, Jehovah Elohim, who sees me where I am at and understands me in a way that nobody can. And, um, you know, for every waiting womb, I think that's the one key thing is always that we want to be seen we want to be heard and that's what that's the, that's what god does for us and for me um you know sis having the miracle of a child has been such a such a powerful miracle and god blessing me with now expecting another child but really the greatest miracle that god did for me was um seeing me and um mm-hmm. letting me know that as i am i am enough in him whether or not I knew I, I knew the children would come at some point, but I got to a place mm-hmm. where I said, God, whether or not you give me children, I thank you that I'm enough in you. And that's the biggest miracle for me. Wow. Wow. I feel you, sis. And it takes me back. It takes me back to that time, you know, quite a few years ago when I came and we had lunch at um uh Adam's Arcade remember when we went and had that Japanese uh really really cool stuff and I remember you sharing with me just how difficult it was being in the limelight in the media and just having people ask questions and just dig deep and I don't know what it is with Kenya man y'all ask some questions y'all just you're in people's faces like it's crazy and just the things that you shared with me and you know, not for one moment did I doubt that this day would come. And for me, it was it was a prayer that I held for you and knew that one day we will be, you know, celebrating the birth of, of you know, not just one, but many. And I remember the prayer I prayed at your house um, when we had dinner. Remember, the prayer was that the next time I come, that there will be you know, the sound of little Petey, Peter Patter, um, you know, feet of children running around, and that has come to pass. It has come Amazing. to pass because God is faithful. And I remember that prayer, sis, and I remember um, going through my, carrying my pregnancy with Nathaniel, and earlier on in the pregnancy, there was, I had, though at some point I had so much fear and anxiety, and I remember you praying for me, and say, and you and you said, I hear a strong heartbeat and strong kicks. And I kept making that prayer all the way up until when Nathaniel arrived. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I would speak it. I'd say strong heartbeat and strong kicks. And it really was and it still is a journey of faith. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he's agreeing with us. I think Nate's yeah. like, yeah, mama, strong heartbeat, <laughs> loud voice. <laughs> He has a big voice like his uncle George. <laughs> oh, George. Um, I think his uh Nathaniel's taken a, a little bit after you there. You bet. 
You bet. I, I would love the little boy. Just uh, he's such a miracle, and uh, and really everything about his life. You know, when you look at, uh, you know, uh, he was born before time, and just everything was fighting that little boy. But he's such a fighter, yeah. strong kicks. Amen. He's a good, yeah. amazing kid. Amazing kid. And 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 you guys, you know, I mean, I think men men find it difficult to identify with the whole aspect of of pregnancies and and now in Yapura, you know, you've carried like what? Carried two pregnancies and now, you know, Kambu, you're two pregnancies. What's what's the deal there? What's, uh, I remember <laughs> watching Arnold Schwarzenegger, who, who <laughs> this Hollywood movie and he was pregnant and we they were trying to relate the hormones, <laughs> the, the things that women go through and, and what's it like? What, 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 how can you carry a baby in your in your belly? What, what's that like? Oh gosh, I, I don't think there's anything. I don't think Arnie did any justice to <laughs> what it. There's just so many no, things. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. I think it's just such a. It's it's something that is so. You can't describe it until you go through it, you know, like now, Kambu, I know how you feel like sitting down, lying down. You feel like a whale when it's time to get up. You're like, can somebody literally help me up like a crane and just lift me? Turning in bed, sleeping is so hard because like a load and, and just then needing to go to the bathroom often often uh it's just i remember both times just thinking okay i'm going to the shops um when i get there i need to know exactly where in the mall um you know the restroom is because that's going to be my first stop after i have driven for like you know half an hour so it's just it's things nobody tells you but you just experience you know as a, as a yeah and being hungry what about this this hormonal changes from woman to Wolf man. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like? Like you're like like it's like jackal and hide. You, today you're like this. Tomorrow you're like this. It, it's amazing to see you know to see the intricacy that God has 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 used to create women and and it's just absolutely amazing. It just it just makes you champion and bless mothers so much. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think it's, you know, because it's such a hormonal journey. Um, and so, you know, your hormones are on such a high and you're probably at a very sensitive place. Um, and, and things that would ordinarily probably not trigger you can trigger you. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I think... Yes, you say yes may not be yes. It may be no, yeah? <laughs> My yes is yes, though. <laughs> Consistently. <laughs> I think also, Kambua, I think also husbands do experience their own kind of... <laughs> because I think Jackson, um, he's gone through the waves, man. You know, baby arrives and he's like, okay, I need, I need, I need nurturing too, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> I think Jackson has had his own um, moments as well. So it's, it's not just the woman. I believe yeah. you know, that uh, the husband, the dad to be, the dad does go through through stuff as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is a, a really good segue into growing up and childhood. And I'll, I'll bring it to you, George. Um, I remember you, you've you always had this gentle spirit about you, George. You've always had this gentle... Um, I know that. Yeah, yeah, you, you do, you do. Um, there are moments, there are, there are a few brief, no, there they are. Uh, and I don't know if you remember this, but it's when we used to live in Highview. And I don't know why this image for me, and I was a baby, like I was little. I think I was, what, four? No, it's, it's not the story. Is it the story about you flying on a parachute? Yes, like, yes. Come on, come on. Oh 
that's what I remember when I think of my childhood and I think of you. I think so. George used to pretend like he was so good at, and he still does this. And he would like carve a wire, right, <laughs> and pretend that he was making a parachute. And he'd tell me, "Oh, you know, we're gonna make this parachute. We're gonna fly." And for some reason, I believed him. I believed really? that this, this parachute I never was so Like I'm I still mean, I, 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 I was so amazed <laughs> that you actually. I, I couldn't believe that you. Believe. <laughs> yeah, on this on this little like maze cob you know yeah. and, I, and I remember it was a maze cob so it has yeah. to be light enough, light <laughs> enough to bring to bring it down to come down and i'm thinking how does this girl think that we're going to go to westlands in this in this <laughs> It's, mm. it's called, that's, that's the heart of a child, you know, and, yeah. um, and I like how, you know, Jesus references this and he says, unless you have the heart of a yeah. child. You receive yeah. the kingdom like a little, like a little baby. Yeah. Like a little child. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I strongly believe that there's, some, there's in a sense, there's just a beauty. And, and I'm sure, Kambua, man, you guys, you and Jackson experience this all the time when you're seeing Nathaniel discovering new things. Yeah. It, it just the innocence, you know, I'm sure even just putting up the Christmas tree was, yeah. was an event in itself. It was an event. It's still an event trying to keep him away from the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, right. The, the innocence is really so refreshing and, and wow. just believing what you tell them. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So, George, just going back to our childhood and, and just the heart that you have, you know, you have this heart of a father. You know, I hear that they call you dad now. And I was like, dad who? You know, like I'm still, my my wow. knowledge of you... <laughs> It's still so like cream pasta. And so yeah. um so when I hear that the, the way you know the, the people that you serve there call you, it is it is really, really just so humbling. But did you always know you were going to get into ministry or was it your you know, because you're an incredible artist and I won't get into the stories of where you for many years did my assignments for me for art and craft. Like he would draw amazing things oh, and wow. submit them and the teachers thought, Oh my god, why don't you draw like this in class? <laughs> but George used to do my homework. <laughs> you know so, what, Anne? You know what? Straight from the get-go in, in, in Kagumo, third form, when I came to the Lord, when I gave my life to the Lord, you know, became, you know, uh, became a born-again Christian. Um, I, I, I always, somehow, I always knew I was going to be a part of, you know, speaking the good news. For some reason, it was so etched in my spirit that this was the call. I don't know. It, you know, it's like if it's there, it will burn. Uh, um, somebody says, if God calls you, go and hide. If nobody comes for you, you're not called. Um, so, <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, because a lot of people go and then, you know, nobody called it. I mean, they call themselves. But um God calls special people into the ministry. Wow. Uh, and when you begin to realize that life is a gift from God that God has given to you and the way you live out your life is your gift to God, then, then it becomes so easy because this is a love relationship. This is not our, our relationship with God is like, a, you know, it's what is he saying? What does he need me to do today? It, it, you simplify the relationship with God because it's, it's, it's on a daily basis. Jesus mm -hmm. says sufficient for, for, for the day are the cares of today, forget about tomorrow. Don't, don't talk about tomorrow. You know, he says, look at the birds. They, they you know, they, you know, they, 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 they you know, they, they, they fly up in the air and and they're not worried about where they're going to get the yeah, next worried. meal. Yeah. And God, God sees every sparrow fall from the from the heavens. You know, so uh, yeah. what a, George pre yeah? pre Kagumo pre Kagumo there was. There was a thing. There was something there because I remember when we used to go to, is it St. Paul's? Uh, yeah. When we used to as kids and you were um, one of those altar boys. I still remember seeing you. <laughs> like you were so little and you were like. No, I, really in <laughs> really I did it like thrice or. Or four times, or maybe five times. <laughs> but yeah. I still have that image. I still have that image. <laughs> it's it's almost like you're set apart from from when you're little. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I really think God calls you 
early. I really think God calls you early. And, and the process of you getting there, you know, so he's going to take you through life and, and my you know, going to the UK, you know, my involvement with my local church and, and all that. I thought for the longest time, like you're saying, that I would, I would get into the art world. I remember going to New York on a school trip when I was in the UK. And, uh, and I thought I was going to, and they gave me this opportunity, and I, I don't tell people, too many people, this, they gave me this opportunity to, to stay in New York and to do a couple of things there, but, but I knew I was supposed to be back, back in the UK, and I, so I didn't, I, I said no. Yeah, I said wow. no to, to New York. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and one of the TV stations, I don't know, one of the TV stations also called me, they said, hey, we'd like you to be a presenter, we, we want you to do this, but, but it always felt like, it always felt like I was selling myself short yeah. by, by not being in my element, by not being the person that God called me to be. So pastoring, mm -hmm. um, it's been a process, you know, you, you grow into it, you get some great, you get some great people, you know, who serve around you and just wonderful people. And yeah. it's not easy, but um, it's been awesome. It's, it's, that's what I'm called to do. That's what you're called to do. And wow, it's it's amazing. And I can attest to the fact that that calling was there from, from a very, very young age, that being set apart. Kambua, let's come to your music. Your music has been part of your life for a long, long time. You know, it took you to Canada where you, you know, you, you studied that deeply. And when you sing, we can tell this is somebody who has, you know, spent some time <laughs> learning the tunes. This is not just, yeah. Yeah. I'm a bless you with a song kind of situation. <laughs> this is real stuff. <laughs> no, 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 what was it like? It was, it was, it was, uh, listen to the words, don't listen to the <laughs> Not the yes. voice. I remember that. I remember that. But this, there's definitely a marked difference. Sis, you are absolutely blessed. So talk Thank us, um, through what are your thoughts now you know you're, you you've made it big in the music industry in in kenya um certainly when i met you it, it wasn't like this it, it wasn't the days of instagram it it wasn't of this magnitude has this met your expectations or has it in some ways exceeded your expectations um, wow, that's a good question, sis. I think that um, I feel that my dream has um, my dream has always been has always been bigger than I am, and so it, what where God takes it always surprises me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I knew from very very early on that I wanted to sing and I wanted to um, communicate in that way. It took. A couple of years well into my young adulthood to know that I wanted to use my voice to um, specifically tell people about God uh, but I never I never knew how it would pan out how it would work out what it would look like what the details of that picture looked like mm -hmm. and when I was going through school in Canada I imagined a completely different path I was uh, studying classical music and um you know, a lot of opportunities opportunities had started opening up for me in Canada, and I imagined that that's the line I'd take. I'd be um, an opera singer somewhere. I thought, wow. um, wow. yeah. <laughs> and um, and then God just completely steered that ship mm -hmm. around, and I found myself back in Kenya. And you know, for like a couple of months, I I wrestled with. Should I go back? Should I stay? Should I go back? Should I stay? And I was literally living off of my suitcases, you know, and my mom would be like, okay, are you going to unpack? Because I was so, I wasn't sure yet. Um, but then I also remember the time when it became very clear for me that I need to stay. And that was when I feel like God allowed me to see what he could do with the gift if I just allowed him. And if mm -hmm. I didn't try so hard to control the narrative. So um, the music started to get a life of its own. And honestly, it was very scary at first mm -hmm. because I, um, first of all, my personality, I'm a very introverted person. I like, um, I like my space. I don't like being out there too much. So I was okay with people hearing the music and not knowing who I am. And then mm -hmm. suddenly 
the two had were starting to get merged and um and, and you know so the music was getting a life of its own and i was suddenly being thrown into the limelight and it was scary and i remember saying god i don't know if i can do this if i have what it takes and um just navigating the murky waters of being a, a public figure and sometimes your message getting lost in there because yeah. you, know, you want to communicate one thing and it's understood in a different way yeah. it was really such a um especially in the in the in the beginning years such a struggle but now mm. i know what clarity for making my vision so clear and what i want to do and what i want to say and um you know being able to be at a place where i can say no to certain um paths and doors and opportunities which are great but they're not for me and they're not in line with my calling yeah. so um yeah the, the the dream keeps surprising me and i i'm excited to know that god is not done he's still there's still so much more every time i think like oh gosh you god you've done so much he does then a lot more so it's yeah. it's, it's it's a great journey so far no it's been a beautiful journey to watch and let's talk about celebrity dom in kenya because really? i know Okay, <laughs> I know what it means being a celebrity in Australia. I do not know what it is. So, <laughs> but how is it in Kenya? Uh because I've spent time with you on the street and it's it's not like I mean people will come quietly and say hi. Um but I ha- we've never been mobbed. We have never been mobbed. Mm-hmm. We've gone to supermarket. We've done lots of things. Yeah. Uh how is it now because obviously as the years go by you are becoming more and more famous and gosh instagram has just blown up and how is that for you how how does that sit with you in terms of your personal life and your your work life which is you know the the celebrity bit yeah um it's a it's it's a balance that i'm trying to learn every day and just constantly drawing and redrawing and reemphasizing my boundaries and my lines as far as um for me i'm fully aware that kambua has chosen this path but i know my husband jackson does not like being out there like that um mm. so being able learning how to protect him i think initially i'd be very I, i was okay from time to time posting his pictures on my instagram but then you realize he'll make it to the blogs and i'm like no he doesn't he yeah. doesn't like that um so learning to protect him learning to protect the people close to me um you know my family my 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 mom my my nieces my nephews just keeping the, them away from that space my son nathaniel um because i want him to be to get let him be old enough to decide i want to be on instagram you know yeah. for now i don't want to make that decision for him um it's very um sometimes it's overwhelming when you think about it uh, when you think that okay there's all these one maybe on instagram 1 million people who i don't know personally um and you know i i don't know what their why they follow me what their perception of me is it it can be overwhelming but i thank god that they're there that they're following because there must be a reason there must be something that's drawing them to that platform or to the, my platforms and to what i have to say so over time what i've learned is to just be very intentional um mm-hmm. i think i'm sharing this with you sis is that i'm very, anytime i put out something whether it's my facebook or my instagram i have thought through it so much i yeah. have drafted it and edited and deleted and you know done by the time it goes out um <laughs> I, i i i i'm i'm okay i've made my peace with however far it will go if it makes it to the yeah. blog or you know if it screenshots of it are taken and shared on whatsapp groups i've made my peace with that um so yeah i take it in stride i really take it in stride i think being a celebrity in kenya is probably very different from being in australia and mm-hmm. other parts of the world um kenyans are very peculiar people um so <laughs> a lot of kenyans will not always do the super fanning out when they see you They're very very calm and don't want to show you that 
you're that big of a deal. So, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> it's just, you know um but then there's times you depending on where you are like especially i i used to do a show called bambika where we traveled around the country and you'd go to places like um i was gonna say bungoma george loves bungoma um, no, 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 <laughs> from. you gotta gotta remember that <laughs> like you know, Kakamega or you know, just very remote places and people are just so um in awe or appreciative of who you are because wow. they've always wow. only seen you on TV and they cannot believe that you're right mm-hmm. there with them. So mm-hmm. um, I would find those so fulfilling because wow. um get to see the impact directly that you're having on people and, mm. and you know, on their lives. So it's, it's, wow. it's a balance. <laughs> it's a balance. Oh. Kakamega is a hot spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, I, I, think, um, I love how you shared that with me because here I am, you know, um, growing the impact that uh, I want to have with, with my um uh, platform and calculating so much. I was like, oh, you know, posting this um, and just obviously the whole, make, you know, drafting and drafting and before you press post. And then, you know, 10 people like and they're like, yay, you know, it's it's 10 people and sort of Googling uh, how to handle fame. And then here you are, like blowing up the internet and, you know, like it's, it's so different, um, the perspective of things um, and, and just, I guess, staying grounded, staying yeah. humble, because for me, I, I, I don't think uh, that you've changed much since that Nishikilia moment in Naivasha. No. No. <laughs> Thank you. No. <laughs> which, which is absolutely <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> If anything, I mean, she's really opened up. She's blossomed into this amazing, amazing woman. I think motherhood Thank looks you. motherhood looks good on you. Thank and I, I don't know, you've just, you've become something. I mean, I see you. I see you. And uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's just so amazing to see you become, evolve into the person you have come over. It's, it's absolutely Thank amazing. You. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate that. Absolutely. You know, Kamboa, you're such a beautiful addition to our family. Um, we love you. We cherish you in, in everything that you are, you know. I think I think we 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 would supersede the Kakamega crew. I think <laughs> our love for you. <laughs> you do by far. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if I would say something, I mean I I think I think I think Kambua and I it's like we always loved one another. It's not. It's not. It, it, it was a very um, effortless. That's a good word. Effortless relationship. You know, there's there's some strange relationships. Mm, there's yeah. some relationships you know, labored. You try so hard, but I got, it was always so easy. It was always yeah. so easy. It was always like just there. Yeah. And, yeah. and really accepting and so open and loving. So it's just. It's just. Um, I love I love going to you. I love coming to your place. I love I love hanging yeah, out with you guys. Oh, we love having you. We love doing that. I've not been there for a while, you know. Yes, but, uh, I'm gonna be there when I get there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, we we're gonna wind it up. We can talk forever, as you know. And this is so special, just being with family because family is just a breath of fresh air it it truly is and as we wind down i just want you both to share with me what have been some of your greatest lessons for 2020 and what has kept you going and maybe i'll 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 start with you george what has been your greatest lesson for 2020 and what has kept you going bro Uh, from the onset gratitude Gratitude, um, the fact that uh, we you, we take things for granted. I think I heard somebody say this. He said he said you have two lives, but and and the second begins when you realize you only have one. That's a Ooh. bit profound. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a bit on the profound side because because sometimes we are so driven by desires and too many desires have a tendency of taking away your gratitude because too much you become like a slave to the desires. So you mm -hmm. fail to like the guy who's sick in bed today would like only has one desire and his one desire is to get well. To yeah. get well. To get well. Yeah. You'll be surprised. Uh, but, but, but the guy who has too many desires, you like become a slave. You become a slave to these desires. You want this, so you gotta. You almost you you almost have to stop yourself and 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 check, put a check on the desires and ask the Lord. Hey, by the way, what should I be be pursuing here? What's the deal here? So that that spirit of gratitude, especially, mm -hmm. and may, and I haven't said this. I haven't said this before. But going through a COVID illness, and I haven't shared this, I haven't shared it with our people. Maybe this is a good, since, since I'm with Kambua here and with, with Annie, and when we're family and we're just being ourselves, I think this is a good platform maybe to share it on. Um, this, this, this virus is for real. Um, I, think, I think you've got to be careful in this sense that you're not allowing fear, because I think this, this virus is also being driven by fear. But uh, but but I'll not forget, you know, being being on that on that COVID COVID um, uh, you know um, three weeks and uh, and I tested positive for the virus and, and 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 just coming away and 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 checking out my life and and, and I'm going through all these symptoms of, of of a disease that is you know killing people and and you're wondering, God, have I did I have I done enough? You know, I'm, I know this 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 can't be my time to go. I know this is not my time to go. And I, and 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 but you know, uh, severe severe real severe symptoms. I mean, you know, ha mm -hmm. had to go through some kind of oxygen uh, situation, mm -hmm. and and um, it, it wasn't easy. You know, it, you know when your life flashes before your eyes, and um, and you have to ask yourself the the tough questions. You know. Um, my relationships, what are they like? Um, you check out the people you were born with. You know, Annie, you've been so dear and special to me all these years. But uh, have you? Ha have we? Have we maximized our relationship? Have we? Have we taken our relationship to the place it's supposed to go? Because every relationship has some, some kind of a blueprint, and mm -hmm. God has really structured relationships, and He has the best, and He has ordered the best. But the onus is on us to become the best for one another, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and and when you go through when you go through you know a bed of affliction, when you when you go through what I went through, and you have to separate yourself from people, and and you can't come close because you're going to infect them, and then a lot of things come to mind. So many things come to mind. What kind of a person have I been? You know, um, mm -hmm. what. what Things, what, what are my misplaced values? Because we have such, we have, my God, you, you'll, be, you'll be surprised when you're in a crisis, you, you'll realize the number of misplaced values you have. We attach uh, value on the wrong things. Yeah. And so maybe the lesson for me, the lesson for me, 2020 lesson, gratitude, gratitude. The sick guy wants to get well. And in a time where people have lost jobs, in a time where people are, you know, have been ravaged all over. You, you, I mean, you go, you, you, you go to places and 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 um, you know, no school and and some people lost family members. You know, people who are healthy. You know, it's one thing to go through a disease for for a while, but to, you know, for a healthy member, you know, to kind of go down over a period of a week and they are no longer there. It's, it's, it's a crisis. This is a crisis, not just in a country, this is a crisis around the world. And, and if, I would, if I would commend anything, it would be that spirit of gratitude, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. Maybe, maybe this new year, maybe because this is, we're coming into a time of surprises because I heard that in my spirit, like surprises. God will surprise us. This is a time of surprises. But as we come into this 2021, gratitude, Ah, really? gratitude. Ah, I am saying thanks for things we haven't said. Thanks for, thanks for relationships. Maybe, maybe, maybe a mother you haven't called in a long time. Ah, maybe mm. those, those little, those little differences we have 
with one another, you be surprised at how they fade into nothing when you are in a crisis. So this That's is right. a good time for me, gratitude, Annie, gratitude. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful yeah. for you, I'm grateful okay. for you. I'm grateful for your family. I'm grateful for Deng. I'm grateful for the two kids. I, I love you, Kambu. I, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the babies. I'm grateful for your happy, my brother. Is he my brother? Uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm just gratitude, gratitude. I'm here. I want to, I want to simplify my life. I don't want to be. I'm, I'm not. I don't want to be complex. I don't want this and that. I don't want too many desires. Mm -hmm. I hear you, bro. Wow. I hear yeah. you. And wow, wow, wow. Kambur, how did you come back from that? Like, <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. But what has been, you know, your greatest lesson for 2020 and uh, what's kept you going? Um, you know, I, I, I think George Ward it. Word, worded it better by saying gratitude because I was going to say appreciating the small things the little things for me is what this year has taught me um, appreciating the the small opportunities the, the, the little time that you have with people the, um, the little moments that usually I would take for granted because I had so much going for me I had time I, I had you know, I could just step out and go without thinking of, you know, will, will, will I get sick when I step out? Um, mm -hmm. um, we, my work dynamics changing so much now because of COVID and thinking I can't, we, we've not had a, been in a concert or had a gig for a year and took those things for granted. So I've learned this year to, um, to just sort of slow down and, yeah the importance of being effective and not just busy um mm. because i i think i was very busy very very busy and it's okay to be busy but you can be so busy and so exhausted but not effective so That's right. um, god allowing me to be at a place of just quiet spending time with the people who tr really truly matter uh, virtually and in person, my son and my husband, but also um, just being very, very intentional with the things that I'm doing. Mm, beautiful. What does prayer mean to you, Kambua? Prayer to me means um, talking to God and spending time with God. And honestly, Annie, this has changed a lot for me. The, um, when I became a mom, I think my biggest struggle was I, I felt like I didn't have the time that I had before to just sit down for like a long time and meditate and pray and all that. And finding now pockets or spaces mm -hmm. where I can still constantly commune with God. Um, so I'm, I'm sometimes changing my baby's diapers and talking to him, but I'm also mm -hmm. talking to God. So it becoming a constant conversation with God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even just saying, God, help me put this baby to sleep. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. things as simple as that, um, to <laughs> things that are, you know, bigger and more complex. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, being in constant fellowship with God is what prayer means to me. Mm -hmm. George. What does prayer mean to you, bro? I think for me, prayer is, is shifting and aligning your will with God's will. Mm. Because we, we, all, we all want our thing. We, we all want our, our stuff. And there are yeah. two kinds of prayer, maybe. You know, there's the prayer that... You come to God and you say, well, this is what I'm looking for, God, and this is this is exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of a prayer, yes, God answers those prayers because, mm -hmm. I mean, he cares about us personally. But yeah. there's a bigger agenda prayer where you align your will with God's will to where, you know, this these are the prayers that make things go round in the world these are the these, these are the prayers that that, that sustain God, god's hand in the world so when god is moving on some behalf he needs for someone to pray and so i've got to check am i praying the selfish prayer which is my prayer which god 
answers, but it doesn't really affect people. Or am I praying the prayer that influences God's hand and causes God yeah. to move on people? We have now that's prayer for me that's prayer for me and and, and even moving from that selfish place that we mm. have you know, where i'm praying for myself prayer for me mm. is touching you where you are in australia praying for you reaching out saying the things maybe you might not be able to pray articulating god's will your will be done on earth as it is in heaven wow hallelujah bro yeah. And what are you calling for for 2021? 2021, um, I got a catchphrase on Sunday as I was preparing. I was doing my exercises and, 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 and I got a catchphrase and, and it was dropped in my spirit. And, and this was the word I caught, surprise. Surprise. Surprises, surprises. could be surprise even on the, on the converse, on the opposite. It seems like last will be first and first will be last there's a there's a conversation taking place in god that mm -hmm. uh, it's a time of recompense that god will recompense those who have been waiting for him uh, uh, people who 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 seem to be on the last the last of the queue watch for that watch watch for that Watch yeah. for reassignments and realignments. Yeah. Watch mm. for a, it's like a new order of things. After this, and again, this is still like a, a pandemic year, but you know, they're rolling out the vaccines, they're going to be, but in the midst of all that, surprise. Wow. Surprise. Wow. Wow. That is, yeah. that, that's a word. That's a word right there. My sister, yeah. Kambua. What are you calling forth for 2021? I know you got a little one, you know, due in 2021. What are you calling forth, sis? Um, I'm calling forth abundance and just an overflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, over my life mm -hmm. and over the lives of the people that I love and the people that mm -hmm. I minister to. Um, so that I can I can and we can experience God not just the God of just enough, but a God of an overflow. Um, uh, that's what I'm calling for 2021. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. That is, whew, that's been just such a blessing hearing you guys wow. share from the heart. Oh, from the heart. And as we bring it to a close, you know, my hopes for 2021 is that with our individual platforms, you know, uh, Kambua, as you do what you do so beautifully and the lives that you are impacting and George as well over at Miracle Valley and, um, you know, and, and just the, the platforms that you have there, particularly Facebook, my, my um, hope is that the work that we'll do uh, in 2021 and beyond will be of impact, that it will have a massive impact. It will be significant. It will be meaningful. You know, I, I, I pray that our platforms is where people come to, to find hope to find that um, desire to keep going for the next day because they've been made for greatness. They've been made for something that is bigger than they are. And never to forget that they're not here by mistake. We are not here by mistake. You are here for a purpose and on purpose. So you fulfill that mandate that's been put in you. You fulfill that, you know, it's it's not time to um, take your time and look around and just um, not use up your life well. You're here for a reason. This, if anything, 2020 has taught us is that life is short yeah. and that yeah. we are to embrace what we have as a gift. Yeah. We are also to use it and impact the lives around us. We, we don't necessarily have to be, you know, um, celebrities to do that. We can do that in our own right, in our own homes, wherever we have a voice. And so that is my hope for 2021, that our platforms will impact other lives, but also for you at home who's watching this or wherever you are, that you know that you are significant, that you have been made incredibly special and you're here for a reason and for a purpose and that you need to fulfill whatever that is in your life. And as we close, I also want to share my favorite scripture of all time. And this is Philippians 4, 8. And I'm reading from the NIV version. 
Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Now, I know when we get bombarded by negative news, left, right, center, it's so easy to just get pulled into that news cycle and just, you know, marinating and staying there in, in the thickness of how bad things are. But remember Philippians 4, 8, that we are to think of those good things and meditate on that. And so, everybody, thank you so Listen. much. This is so good. We got to do this again. We got to do this yes. again. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we should. We should. I wonder what you guys want us to do. Maybe you can leave a comment below and let us know if you would like the family to, to come back again and, um, and, and speak into your lives. Maybe this time it will be different. Maybe we'll be speaking directly to you guys and um, not so much sharing um, how our year has been, but speaking words of life into your lives. And uh, this has been incredible. I cannot thank you enough, my beautiful beautiful sister Kambua. I love you so much. George, oh George, you know, I love you. I love you, bro. Thank you so much for doing this. And um, here is to an incredible 2021. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy yes, New Year. Yes, yes, yes. Happy New Year. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, sorry. I thought I <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to Uplifting Studios TV, go ahead and do that now because in 2021, we will be bringing you some amazing, amazing um, uh, shows. And in actual fact, we will be premiering uh, season three of what was True Life Stories is dropping on Thursday, the 14th of January, 2021. So in about 14 days, you'll be able to see the new season. Very and I can't wait to share it with you. So everybody, thank you so much for joining us. God bless thank you. you. Happy Bye. Love you. Bye-bye.